So I learned something really interesting today. Um, I spoke recently about how I did not feel like I was a conlanger, even though the definition of a conlanger is someone who constructs languages. So, you know, under that vague definition, of course I would be a conlanger. Um, I mean, maybe to some extent I am. I don't know how you go seven years constructing a language without knowing any of this stuff. I mean, I guess I was really into what I was doing and um, I wasn't really looking for a community or any help or anything to do this. I just Googled everything I needed and relied on my education and then taught myself if I needed anything. So, um, I don't know. It just, it still didn't sit right. It's not that there's anything wrong with conlangers. They're, I, I'm sure they're very fun people. <laughs> um, I've never spoken to any. Maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll try soon. But regardless, so this person had said that conlangers tend to construct languages languages for more artistic purposes. And that makes sense. So it's not necessarily stuff to be used um, in the day to day. It could be for, you know, fooling around with language concepts and ideas or, you know, constructing um, a language for, a, a, you know, a certain purpose like a book or a song or whatever, whatever they wanted it for. Um, and he said, he mentioned something called an auxiliary language. And I feel like I've stumbled upon this before, but I didn't really read about it. And an auxiliary language is like Esperanto. And everyone who knows Esperanto knows that it was, it was sort of constructed by somebody who thought, who, you know, there was too much division. And so he took certain concepts of a language and he, or a few languages, and he simplified them so that it was really easy to learn and so it would unite people. And it's, it's a language that is actually in use and actually, um, it is some people's first language, like their, their mother tongue. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but that would be considered an auxiliary language. And so I guess what I'm going after with what I'm doing is an auxiliary language. And so I think that that the division might be a little bit muddied, really, because, I mean, I might intend to use this for artistic purposes. But really, I would love for it to be used day to day. And so I guess maybe that clears that up a little bit for me. A little bit. Um, if you are a conlanger or you are a constructor of auxiliary languages, I'm not really sure what you would call yourself then, um, let me know. Leave a comment and tell me your thoughts on this because I don't care, you know, what I would be considered. It's just something that I haven't really thought of before now. So let me know.